former RNC chair Ronna McDaniel is officially out at NBC, the network bowing to internal uproar, axing her just two days after her first appearance as a paid contributor. Their news chairman issued this apology to staffers. Over the last few days, it has become clear that this appointment undermines that goal. I want to personally apologize to our team members who felt we let them down. I wonder if Ronna got an apology. Seems like she deserves one. Meanwhile, a source close to McDaniel says she found out about her ouster, not from NBC, but from media reports. And by no surprise, the on-air host at NBC, they are taking a victory lap for silencing a conservative. I just have to say, when somebody does the right thing, I feel like it should be acknowledged as publicly as we acknowledged our outrage. And so I, I know how I feel about it. I am grateful to Caesar for actually making the right decision. I think it was the right decision. It's not even about all. hiring somebody who has Trump ties. This was a really specific case because yeah. of Ms. McDaniel's and uh, her involvement in the election interference stuff. And um, I'm, I'm grateful that our, our leadership was willing to do the, I think, the, the bold, strong, resilient thing. Companies make mistakes, sometimes very big ones sometimes very publicly. It looks like our company listened to us, to you, and did what was right. I want to take this big picture, Ben, and our own foxnews.com, Joseph Wolfson, did just that. Look at this headline. NBC's ousting of Ronna McDaniel reinforces status as anti-Trump pro-Biden network. He goes through the long list of contributors, the Obama administration appointees at MSNBC. John Brennan, remember yeah. John Brennan signed yeah. the letter, the 51 Intel officer saying that Hunter Biden laptop was misinformation. You got Andrew Weissman. I, I think our viewers know who he is. The point is, they're solidifying we do not allow other voices. Yeah, I would. I think it's very clear that NBC, and not just, let's make sure this isn't MSNBC and we put it over here on the side. This is NBC. The entire corporation is now saying freedom of speech is dead here. Conservatives are not welcome here. They have some Republicans, but... But yes. it, moving forward, like the, the message that this is sending to anyone, are you going to want to go interview there if you're a conservative voice, seeing what can happen to you? I mean, yep. I'm not a big person like someone should sue. I hope she sues because the damage they've done to her career, to her, her as an individual, you just signed on to work with this company and then they publicly trash you, tarnish your reputation, yep. and they have the biggest names at NBC doing this, acting like you're some radical or extremist. Because you're a conservative that works the Republican National Committee, this is free speech. It is dead. And, and, and I think it's very, very dangerous. I, I remember you and I used to be at CNN. In the last year that I was there, I was signed, and there was an article that was written that I was benched, but they signed me to have me on a list. I made two appearances in the last year of my contract. Wow. And it was during a presidential year, and the Hollywood Reporter noticed it, and they, they put a big story. One of the appearances was the next day after that article came out. Huh. All they wanted was a check the box conservative. They can say, no, 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 we have both sides here. Yes. But it, but, and that's what it boiled down to. But they're going to keep doing this. And they're going to ruin people's careers in the process. And I think it's wrong. Harris, you know, and that's a key point. Look, they do have some Republicans at NBC. I worked with Mark Short. Um, he was Mike Pence's chief of staff. He is now there. He's a Republican, yes. And there are some others. But Ronna came as close as you could to any voice on the network that supported the current nominee of the party who represents, yeah. according to Real Clear Politics, about half the country. Yeah. So who there, what voice represents half the country? So that is such an excellent point. You've got Nicole Wallace, you've got the former RNC chair, Michael Steele. I mean, you have some Republicans who are there. They are all singular focused on their type of moderate, you know, views on the party. And no, they are not in the camp that Ronna McDaniel and others are in that represent more than half the country. If you take into account maybe even some independents this time around who don't like the weaponization or lawfare as we're seeing it. But at the end of the day, this doesn't say whether or not they don't want other voices. They don't want those voices. They are in the camp that anybody who thinks or speaks like Ronna McDaniel is deplorable. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And when you look at the, and the RNC compiled this, we ran it last hour. When you look at all the Democrats that questioned election, uh, elections in the past, those election deniers on the left, there were quite a few. Um, it could take you a while to, to scroll through or to play those montages. We played a lengthy one. 
So what they really want are just a, they don't want a cacophony of voices debating the issues and rigorous debate and talk and all that. They want a lockstep Republican that they can predict and bring in a day after they issue a press release that we have Republicans on yep. our air and move on. I'll tell you the biggest problem, and I tweeted about this last night, or X post. Um, their biggest problem is that that became a public toxic work environment for her. Mm, she was yes. still an employee when they were tearing her down. Yeah. Now, if NBC and MSNBC execs were smart, they would have warned their people, if you want angst, air it privately in the family, we'll get together privately in your offices. But they now have opened themselves up to epic lawsuit proportion. I hope she gets paid to high heaven because they created a place where she was bullied in the public sphere, mm -hmm. bullied in the public square of television, and degraded to the point where, yeah, it might be hard for her to get another job right away. I think that's we an excellent know. point. But that, uh, the attorney, I'm sure, can make the point. I think that's an excellent point. And it's, I, I think it's important for me to say I worked for Rana for two years, and I found her to be nothing but upstanding, committed to the conservative movement, and someone whose voice was credible and was a part of the national conversation. Um, I will say, Emily, I was very troubled by what happened at the White House. I don't think it's the place for the White House to weigh in on certain personnel decisions. And I want to play something. Karine Jean-Pierre says twice in her interaction, I'm not weighing in on a personnel decision. But there are little subtle clues as to where the White House comes down on this argument, which I find to be beneath the office of the president. Let's watch. I'm not going to make any comments on that person on a personnel decision, but as more broadly speaking, uh, it is uh, it is important. It is it is a burden on all of us here, right, to be really mindful about that and that the public understands what the facts are and what the truth is. Well, you're, so you're quoting the president talking about that kind of burden. Um, I mean, do you? Does this White House? Does the president believe that that? Um, kind of voice, that voice like hers, that there's room for her in the national political discourse. I mean, look, I'll, I'll say, I'll answer it this way. We saw what happened on January 6th. The exchange went on for about two minutes, but I think the White House press secretary should have said, I'm not commenting on a private sector personnel decision. We're working on the business of the American people. Of course, but that would mean that they actually are, which they're not. She's always quick to shut down any question about Hunter Biden or anything that doesn't please or serve the commander in chief, but this she was happy to weigh in on. What else would you expect from an administration that loves pressuring social media accounts as well to get their message out there? Quick point on what Harris said. So the camp immediately, Rana's camp immediately came out, those associated with her that said, yes, absolutely. Not only was this mad defamation of character, but it was also a hostile work environment because they were her colleagues. The issue even more than her being terminated was that the talent was allowed to drag her through the mud for that brief interlude when she actually worked there and that was sanctioned and blessed clearly by the executives. They cast her as an enemy of democracy. She will be laughing all the way to the bank when they are forced to pay out her full contract, which is 300K each year. That's 600K, which she got basically for working for 30 seconds. So bravo to her, but it's not without pain. And to your point, if there is hostile work environment or defamation associated with it, there's going to be a lot more punitive damages on top of it. So NBC, I hope being an invertebrate platform was worth it to you. Leslie, I, I love having you on the couch. I really do. I love, you know, you yeah. represent a half of the country that I think deserves a voice. And I think it's important for news stations to endeavor to bring both those voices there. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think it's very important. I mean, if I'm sorry, I, you know, people sometimes say to me, you know, you they get angry if I don't agree with them. What makes our nation great is that we don't all agree. We don't want to be North Korea. We don't want to be Iran. We want to be the United States of, yeah. of America. Okay. Yep. Um, I feel this was handled poorly and I'll tell you why. Look, every network, you know, you guys are at CNN, you know, I'm here. There are people that they like better than others because they view some people as more extreme, perhaps, and they do want to have that person who's more moderate or maybe who's not argumentative or whatever the uh, category is they come under. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I feel that M M NBC shouldn't have hired her in the first place, and before hiring her, they should have sat down because I could have predicted this was going to happen, and I'm not an NBC executive. I'm sure they knew there would be threats of boycotts, anger, among, a a anger amongst the, uh, the viewers, anger amongst the uh, people, especially in MSNBC, See who are the host. Um, I don't know why, and I, I think they should have done that. I, I do agree with you there, but before they brought her on on board, uh, because she is going to walk away with you know, depending on the contract between three and nine hundred thousand, and they have opened themselves up uh, to a lawsuit. 
Um, so I, I, you know, I don't think it's wrong that they let her go. I just don't think they should have brought her around in the first place. And if they did, they should have sat down and said, okay, and this is what we're, we're thinking. This is what we're going to do. Let's all play nice. Yeah. And this is why we're doing it. Give both halves of the country a voice. I, I think the American people are served when that happens. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts, Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany, on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern. Or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.